Welcome back, folks. It's, of course, 2021, and, uh, well, as we know, sport in the Western Cape, across the country, across the world, in fact, has slowed down uh, a fair amount. But nevertheless, there are some sports that are remaining active. Uh, of course, we know that uh, there are uh, clubs out there, and, of course, there are different sport codes that are able to, to um, train and participate and practice um, under these very strict COVID regulations. Um, but uh, telling me a little bit more about what's happening in the world of kickboxing, the president of Western Cape Kickboxing, Josh Kluter, joins me again. Uh, Josh, great to see you back on the line. Uh, back and welcome to 2021. Seppi, thank you for having us again on uh, uh, Cape Town TV. Josh, uh, welcome. 2021, um, great to have you back on the show. Uh, we haven't seen you, of course, for a year now. Um, you're, of course, a personal trainer, a, a kickboxing coach, a coach, a high-performance coach. Have you managed to keep some of your members fit during these difficult times? Happy, yes. Uh, you know, 2020, uh, of course, was challenging. But I think as, as the year progressed, uh, we became accustomed to to the COVID uh, protocols and, um, and how to do things. You know, that's just uh, the nature of, of humans. You know, we find ways to to get things done under extreme uh, conditions. Yeah. So in terms of, uh, of, of, of of me being a personal trainer, you know, I maintain to to work with a lot of clients. In, in, in fact, some of the clients who, who contracted COVID came back and one could, could work with them in terms of uh, getting their fitness to a level again, you know, which was depleted by by the COVID um, virus. So there's means of ways to, to work around it. And, and, and I kind of found that kind of fixed. In terms of kickboxing, uh, most of our kickboxing clubs uh, are operational in terms of training. We, uh, we are now also planning our 2021 calendar. It looks like... Uh, Probably after April, we'll start with a full-on calendar uh, in terms of uh, kickboxing uh, events. Let's just go back a step, uh, uh, Josh. So we're talking about, um, uh, call it, is it, would you, would you refer to it as COVID rehab? We, we understand that, that COVID um, has, a, has a severe impact on, on fitness, uh, maybe some muscle loss and, and what we understand of also uh, a, a large impact on the lungs. So do you, uh, tell us a little bit about the, the kind of um, exercises or training that you might have some of your clients doing. See, JP, with, uh, yeah, you know, you utilize uh, good terminology in terms of COVID rehab. You know, obviously, uh, after a person has, has suffered uh, COVID, uh, one of the, 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 the symptoms that stays there for a while is obviously the lethargic feeling and the tiredness and obviously that takes a lot on the, the lungs uh, within the, the body so so when the person comes back from 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 that kind of condition obviously you've got to go very uh, slowly introduce the person again slowly into into a program where uh, uh, you know your, your, your cardio exercises is obviously important again a very low percentage of, of cardio work must be done in terms of building up the lung uh, threshold again. So uh, a little bit of strength training and then uh, obviously a uh, coincide with, uh, with very, very slow uh, cardio uh, training. You, you talk about being lethargic. Clearly, w when this kind of thing happens, it also m must impact the, 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 the spirit or the motivation. It must be quite difficult to just want to keep active to stay positive when, when, when you're feeling so down and you're feeling so tired, is, would, you, would you say that being able to come to you for this kind of exercise or, or get involved like that um, lifts the spirits and gets people positive, which adds on the, maybe adds on the, on the positive trajectory? No, uh, yes, uh, there's no doubt you know, that uh, any person that goes into or attract COVID uh, have have some psychological uh, effect on that, you know. For especially for the reason that it, it it affects people differently, it's not it's not the same with 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 anyone. So you know, when when a person contract COVID, he or she obviously most mostly think the the worst thing that can happen, you know. So when a person goes through it, and uh, and the, at, at the end of 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 the ordeal. Uh, they they have obviously have suffered a lot of psychological impact, 
So that also have to, to, to take, be, be taken care of. And um, hence the importance of, of uh, slow starting with, uh, with the training program and not just uh, plunging into the program and pick up where you left off. Tell us a little bit about the kickboxing training. Uh, of course, now I think a lot of people with a festive season would normally have taken a bit of a break. Um, now people want to start training again. You start looking forward, even though we don't know exactly what's happening with COVID, but you start mentally preparing yourself for some tournaments and some competitions. What is the kind of training that the kickboxing guys are doing? JP, we, we, our program for now, we are looking at, uh, at, at starting our first events just after April. And the rationale behind that is that um, looking at that guidance from government, uh, looking at the vaccine mid-February, uh, and uh, we believe that by, but, uh, with April, and it would, would be a, a quite safe uh, time frame to start. Uh, in terms of training for, um, for the kickboxers, you know, we are now uh, pre-seasoning, if, if one can utilize that terminology, whereas uh, most kickboxers will start training uh, a cardio workout and just get the general fitness. And of course, uh, kickboxing specific training will, will most probably just start kicking in uh, February, March. So Josh, for, for kickboxers, what is the sort of the, 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 the ambitions of a kickboxer? I mean, we know that in boxing, you aim to, well, I suppose a lot of boxing, boxing guys, they will aim to get their pro card and become a professional boxer. Is there something like that in kickboxing? JP, kickboxing is very much the same like any professional sport, you know, whereby athletes uh, uh, aspire to obtain uh, district colors, provincial colors, national colors, and of course, to represent the country uh, on uh, at your world uh, championships. Yeah. So it, it, it's, it's take the same line as any other kind of sports. And yes, uh, kickboxing has also have a professional uh, scene, just like your, your, your boxing. And most uh, kickboxers here uh, aspire to become uh, professional kickboxers as well. Do you think that kickboxing is one of those sports that really is in a position to take advantage of the fact that, well, they say that in the world today, we've ha never had such a captive audience. And if we look at some of these MMA fights that have been happening on TV, it's pulling globally a massive TV audience with enormous pay-per-views. Do you think kickboxing Western Cape is in a position to capitalize on that and put some fights on behind closed doors and get some live streaming going maybe? Look, that is definitely the, the, the way to go within this time frame and uh, i am confident that kickboxing have the capabilities yeah. and that uh, 2021 will probably be a different year for kickboxing in terms of uh, exposure i think 2020 we were a little bit of courses didn't know what to do and how to do it uh, 2020 has taught us yes this is a way to go yeah. and uh, kickboxing will definitely get on board with uh, in terms of uh, pay-per-view and online so and yes yes we, we we obviously can do events without spectators so so that will definitely happen this year well i think that's your bonus if you, if you think about yourself you, you need to put two fighters in a in a bubble <laughs> you don't have to worry about hundreds and thousands of people you get two guys and it's maybe a little bit easier to do i don't know it's, it's a bit of a challenge but we'll see where we go look so it's never easy yeah. it, 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 it's never easy to have events without spectators but yeah. but of course you know the circumstances uh, drive you to that and yes it makes life uh, from a logistic perspective, maybe a little bit easier to have events without spectators. But, you know, spectators always makes the event. Yeah, no, absolutely. I suppose also for the fighters, it, uh, it is a question of that crowd cheering you and the fans supporting you. And, and there's that vibe as well that carries you on. And so the fighters and, and athletes themselves has to think differently. So quite challenging for the athletes as well. No, of course, indeed. I mean, you know yourself, you know, how how, a spectator, how spectators can change a fight, you know, and how they can can lift up uh, any fighter within the ring or even w on the floor, and how that uh, spectators can, can can change the outcome of a fight. Yeah, we're looking forward to it, Josh. Uh, we'll leave it at that, and uh, we'll catch up with you again soon.
There we go, folks. Josh Clutter, Western Cape president uh, of kickboxing or kickboxing Western Cape. Um, look out, look out for some activities there. Looking forward to seeing what kickboxing Western Cape is going to get up to in uh, 2021. We know that the uh, times are difficult at the moment, but it's fascinating to see and it's really positive to see how the likes of kickboxing are, 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 are managing and adapting to, to the environment. Folks, we'll take an ad break. When we come back from the break, we carry on talking about sport in the province. Back in a sec.